OK, recording started. Today we're going to take a look at the bill of materials inside of SAP Business One. The bill of materials can be found in a module here called production. And so let's go into a bill of material. Now there are several different types of bill of materials. There's assembly, sales, production, and template. So if you are a manufacturer or if you do refurbishment repairs, you'll probably be using production bill of materials. So we'll go out here and find some. And here's some of my production bill of materials that I have. So you could bring them from a lookup list or you can simply key in the item number here of that bill of material. So let's first take a look at a, at a production bill of material. And a production bomb, um, it can actually be several different things. So in this example here, this is something that I actually produce. So this would be um, where I would open up a production order and uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. Let's go into production and we're going to open up a production order. And we'll move that off to the side. Now watch what happens when I key in this bill of material number here, right here at the product number in my production order. When I key that in, you see how it brings that bill of material in. So the bill of material is really um, kind of a roadmap to an information about this item up here. And so if I open up a production order to produce this item, it then loads in that roadmap. And the roadmap could be made up of uh, several different elements. You have routing stages. You then have the inventory items that might be coming in or the raw material. And then you have the resources and the resources represent uh, labor staffs or operations, work centers, you know, wherever you go out to the floor to look for work. Now, let's just say you're not a manufacturing company. Then a production bill of material still adds value because um, you can use the bomb for all kinds of different things. For example, if you want to use a bill of material for service and warranty purposes, you're able to do that. Um, the SAP Business One bill of material will support an unlimited number of user-defined fields. So if you've got warranty information, other details that you want to keep track about a product a customer might have, um, you know, it could be used uh, for that as well. It's a great record keeping uh, tool um, if you're not a manufacturer. So again, that's how this could be used. Now, I want to show another way to use a production bill of material. Let's go out and I'm going to bring up another one here. Now, this particular bomb, this is a, something that I don't manufacture, but I service it. And so in this case here, when I go to open up a production order, and let's go ahead and do that. We're going to key in the same, same item here. You see how it brought in my, uh, my, my roadmap here of what I do to service this equipment or refurbish it. And so it's more service related where I'm going to inspect the unit, I'm going to refurbish it, and I'm going to test it. Now, we're at a little bit of a, a, a challenge here because if this is a machine I'm getting back from my customer to refurbish, well, then I, I essentially, I also need to issue that machine into my work order. And SAP will not allow you to do that if it's a standard production order. This is all based on um, you know, st standard principles where it won't let you create an infinite loop where you can't uh, build something that's down here that would cause you to you know, issue it again and again and again. So what we do is we simply change, whoops, we simply change this from a standard production order to a special production order and then we say, no, leave the bill of material. Now I have a special production order. And what I'm able to do is issue the same item I'm refurbishing to that production order. So now I can issue the customer's machine. I want to refurbish, inspect it, uh, put in the labor to repair it, test it and add any additional items that might come up along that way. So that's a really, uh, really neat way, a couple of neat ways to use the production bill of material. So with the production bombs, we're really talking about three key uses. Uh, just a simple, uh, you know, uh, record keeping. These might just be items that could be serial lot controlled, may have warranties, may not. 
that you just want to keep track of uh, for that particular item, where you may not open production orders. It's really just a, uh, a log. That's one way to use a production bomb. Of course, the other way is if you're a manufacturer, then the production bomb would contain the recipe to produce that item. And then lastly, if you're a service company, a production bomb provides a nice way to default in a repair template to use as a starting point when repairing a finished good. All right, so let's look at some other types of bill of materials. Let's take a look at assembly bombs. Now, assembly bombs are really neat and they have a real good special use. I'll give you an example. Let's take a look at one. Here's an example of an assortment. I call it a jet pack, and it's an assortment of six different flavors. Now, um, and you'll see there's no routing steps, there's no labor steps, anything like that. What an assembly bomb is, it's a list of items that are going to get added to the pick list when I sell this jet pack. So let's take a look at that in action. If we come in and we add a sales order here, Let's go ahead and add one in for Earthshaker. Okay, now we're going to put our item in here. Here we go, paste that in there. And when I do that, that's all I see is that one item, the jetpack. I don't see the assorted flavors. Now let's go ahead and let's save this sales order. And then let me show you how it explodes that bill of material on the pick list. So this is useful for companies that have kits, but you don't want the components of that kit being displayed on the sales order. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're going to generate the pick list. Here we go. Pick list not 591 was generated. Here's my pick list. And this is showing up blue as an indication that that's an assembly bomb. And if we do a print preview, there you go. There's the bomb explosion. Now we can see the different components and material that all makes up that kit. All right, so that's a, a good example of an assembly bomb. Again, they're for kits that you might sell, but you don't want the components showing up on sales orders. All right, let's look at our next type of bill of material. This one is called a sales bomb. So let's go out here and find a good example. Let's use this entertainment center. Here we go. So I have a, uh, a bill of material. Let's take a look at it. Here's our bomb. You can see it's a sales type bomb. And when I sell my entertainment center, it's going to include these items. But these items are not interchangeable. They, they get the six slot CD player. Even though I sell eight slot and 16 slot CD players, this kit only includes these items and they can't be mixed and matched. It is what it is. This kit's written in stone, so to speak. So let's copy our kit number and let's go back in and let's create a sales order for it and watch what happens. This time we'll go ahead and we'll use Earthshaker again. And no wonder they're over their credit limit. All right, let's put our item in. Now watch what happens. You see how it then dropped everything in in that kit. So that kit components now are visible on that sales order, sales order acknowledgement, on the shipment, on the AR invoice. It's all, it's all right there front and center. You'll also notice that the item numbers are grayed out. And, and that's kind of an indication that, Mike, you can't come over here and I, I can click, but I can't change these items. So this kit is what it is. It's, it's kind of written in stone. So that's an example of a sales bill of material. All right, <clears throat> we've got one more to look at here. And this is called a template bill of material. Now, a template bill of material is just like a sales bomb. So let's look at this item we were just selling. And I have another version of that item, which is a template bomb. Okay, so uh, here, whoops, let's bring it back in. Here it is. Here's our template bomb. And again, it looks just like our sales bomb. In fact, if I back up one, you see there's our sales bomb. The only difference here, same component, same four components. Uh, it has a different, you know, finished good item. That's a sales bomb. And then we'll go back, same four components. It has a different item ID. It's got a T at the end instead of an S, and it's a template type bomb. So now when we take a sales order, 
let's take a look at how this responds. So we're going to go back into order entry. Let's sell another order to Earthshaker. And we're going to bring in our template bill of material there. So just like the sales bomb, it dropped in all of those components. But the big difference here is that these components are not grayed out. They're interchangeable. So for example, um, I have, like I mentioned before, I have different CD players. So I can go out here and look at my other CD players, my alternate CD players. And in this case here, maybe they want the 12 slot CD player. So in that case there, I'm able to kind of interchange these, these kit components on the fly. It's a, it's a configurable kit, if you will, without rules, but it allows you to configure that kit on the fly. So those are your different types of bill of materials. Um, only the production bomb is something we would use uh, in a production order. Um, and even then, those bombs could be used for repair or uh, simply a, uh, a ledger. All right. Thanks for watching.